All right, so um, for those that don't know what the book's about or the series is about, how would you explain it? Uh, I'd explain it just giving a short summary of the, the first book. Um, it's World War I in uh, London, 1917, and these three young men, John, Jack, and Charles, are brought together by the murder of uh, John's mentor, who's a professor of ancient literature. And as they start talking about this, this terrible event that's happened, another little man, a strange little fellow called Bert, comes to the door where they're at, and he's looking for John, and he's got this big parcel. And he said, what's inside this is why the professor was murdered. And inside the parcel is an old atlas called the Imaginarium Geographica. And it's an atlas of maps of every land you've ever heard of from every story, every myth and legend and fable and fairy tale. And Bert says these lands actually exist in a place called the Archipelago of Dreams. And your mentor, the professor, was one of the caretakers of this book. And it's the reason he was killed. And it's now your responsibility. And we have to leave London because the people that killed him are going to come looking for you. And they have to flee London in one of seven dragon ships, which are, are ships that have a living masthead of a different dragon, all, all different colors. So red, orange, indigo, violet. And they go on the indigo dragon. And it can actually cross over into the archipelago. And that's where they find out that an evil man called the Winter King is trying to take over the archipelago. And he's the cause of World War I as well. And so they have to resolve the conflict in the archipelago to save our world as well. Okay, that's the first book? That's the first book. And uh, what about this book, without giving too much away? Uh, this book, What's without this giving book? much away, it's been nine years since John, Jack, and Charles became the caretakers of the Geographica. And they've been all, all been having nightmares about giants and children. And they're all teaching in Oxford now. And uh, as they meet to talk about these nightmares they're having, a strange little girl called Laura Glue shows up in their garden with artificial wings and a glowing rose and a message for the caretakers. And uh, something that I, I won't give it away here, a lot of people and everyone that's read the first book know who they are, but John, Jack, and Charles become famous, well-known authors. And a lot of caretakers throughout history have been well-known authors or artists or scientists. And uh, as they start talking to this, this girl, she says, there's a terrible crisis in the archipelago. And my grandfather sent me here to get the caretaker to help. All the dragon ships are gone. And all of the children are missing. And they said, well, we're the caretakers of the, the Geographica. You can tell us. And she said, I can't. You can't be a caretaker because your name is John. And I know the caretaker's name is Jamie. And that's when they realize she hasn't come looking for them. She's come looking for their predecessor, Sir James Barry, who wrote Peter Pan. So the, the books, um, calling them a pastiche would be pretty accurate. Because what, what I've done with this device of the Imaginarium Geographica is I can, I can touch on any story throughout history ever. They all occurred in a real place that I've established which means the stories I tell here are the, the precursors or inspirations for every story you've ever read. And so it's not, I, I don't take the material wholesale. I create the stories that could have inspired this. So quests about magic rings and maybe talking lion and that sort of thing. So it, it leaves it pretty wide open. I've, I've got Greek mythology and with fairy tales and Peter Pan and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Tell me about the projects you're working on, uh, movies, that sort of thing. Any merchandising in the future for that? Um, some. We're, we're talking about actually doing an Imaginarium Geographica. Uh, it's probably the first thing that we'd like to do. Uh, merchandising, uh, for the most part, is limited to, to printed things. We're going to do a calendar based on the art, because I've done all the illustrations in the books as well. Um, but mostly the merchandising is tied into the film project. And we're actually hoping that the movie gets underway sometime in the near future. That's all held up at the moment because of the writer's strike in Hollywood. And who's involved with that what, uh, what company? Uh, we got pretty lucky. Uh, it's Warner Brothers that's making the picture. But the producers are uh, David Heyman and David Goyer. 
And this is David Heyman's second series, and his first series is Harry Potter. So that's, uh, that's not bad company to be in. A little bit of pressure. Now, you, you travel around the world you know, doing book signings. You've met some uh, people, some famous people that have read your work or you've heard? Uh, yeah, uh, we're well, running into uh, a, a lot of other authors because we run in a lot of the same circles. Um, it's nice to find out that you've got fans that you've been a fan of. Uh, we have the same publisher uh, in Canada, Stephen King, and I did a reception with him. Um, and then found out that he already had the book. Uh, Robert Englund, who's the actor that plays Freddy Krueger in the Friday the 13th movies, uh, he and I just met in Belgium a few months ago and found out that he was already a fan of my work. And m more than that, he's a fan of our area too. He, he likes to stop and eat at Trapper's Cafe when he's through Taylor, so. <laughs>